we have really only just touched on the very bare minimum sort of this is what a medieval map might look like. And there's a huge amount of, of resources, both uh, sort of um, digital online and, and, and written in books and, and articles. Um, so there are a lot of places where you can get started with learning more. And we wanted to take a few minutes and, and walk through those. So the first of these is, um, the first of these is the, the bibliography that the three of us and, and Chris uh, worked on. And that is available on the Historia Cartarum website um, under Medieval Maps and Mapping Resources. And uh, that's this that we're looking at right here. It uh, has, um, on the front page, it has a list of key readings that cover a lot of different topics um, very, very broadly. So the Portland charts we talked about, um, uh, different kinds of, of early medieval and late medieval cartography, um, as well as some basic reading on cartographic theory um, and some other elements as, as well. Um, then below that, if you, if you sort of follow on down the page, there are um, links to much longer lists about all of these um, different categories. So theories and practice and overview to medieval maps, sort of a, a hodgepodge of different uh, studies on a lot of different medieval mapping topics, maps of the Holy Land, Monsters, portal and charts, as Tobias was talking about Islamic cartography and Chinese cartography. As Helen mentioned at the top, we have largely focused, partly because it's what our work focuses on individually, on um, sort of European constructions of space. But there are people all over the world thinking about what the world and their surroundings look like and mapping it. Um, and so we've tried to touch on that as well with our bibliography. Um, there's a, a really Nice page here for medieval maps and digital humanities, which is sort of Helen's area of specialty to a degree. And then a page with, um, with links and, and, and resources for more specific maps. So um, we showed you the Hereford map and the Ebsdorf map and the Cotton map. And so these are some of the maps that are uh, represented on, in the bibliography if you want to learn more about them specifically. Um, so that is our resource here with, uh, uh, with the bibliography, did either of you want to add anything to that? I just want to say briefly that at the bottom of the page, there is a list of additional contributors. Mm -hmm. um, yes. We, as John Wyatt said, we all tend to work on a similar area of the world. And um, so we have reached out to experts in different fields about different maps or different regions and different types of charts so that you can have a look at a bibliography put together by people who really focus on those specific areas and who are experts in those areas themselves. Tobias, anything you wanted to add? Um, the, the utility of this resource is in the sense that there is a lot of stuff here that no single person really could put together. So this is a good first stop in that way because you, you get a sort of overview uh, of more fields than one person could reasonably uh, get you through. Yeah. So uh, we're going to take a couple minutes and show you a few more resources um, and then we'll, we'll draw this to a, a happy conclusion. Um, so also on the Historia Cartar website here, there are several other mapping projects. Um, I'm going to show you one of them, but there are several others. There's one about mapping eel rinse, which is uh, interest of mine um, and an, another one that overlays uh, a digital a, a medieval travel manuscript the travels of John Mandeville onto the Hereford map that you looked at earlier so you can sort of look at those two elements side by side what I'm going to show you very briefly here is uh, Matthew Paris's annotated map Tobias showed you one of Paris's he was a 13th century English monk who did a lot of different kinds of cartography uh, Tobias showed you his map of the Holy Land but he also did one of the first uh, maps of, of Britain, sort of regional maps of Britain. And so he did several of them. This is the most sort of um, complicated of them. It's called the Claudius map. And what uh, I've done with this map is, um, is annotated it. So all of the elements here, you can scroll over and click on. And if you click on them, you will get the name of the resource or the, the location, sorry, um, a transcription of what the map actually says, so the, the transcribed Latin, and then a picture of it as it currently exists and a link to its Wikipedia page. If you click on the picture, it'll take you through to the Wikipedia page so you can learn a little bit more about the specific locations. So that is 
this resource and it's if you're thinking about um, getting into medieval maps both either either for yourself or as a, a pedagogically it's for teaching um, this is a fairly good resource for getting your students used to looking at medieval maps and the writing on medieval maps because um, they're not always the most accessible um, and getting a sense for what some of the different ways that that the medieval map makers are thinking about their world um, so Paris did it's one of the first sets of regional maps of, of England, but uh, the um, another one is uh, the Gao map. Um, and there's a fabulous project uh, by the Gao map research group, um, taking this, this fantastic medieval document and annotating it very much like I've done with uh, Claudius map, but it's a bigger map and it's a much sort of grander project with a lot of really excellent people working on it. So um, this, the gaumap.org is a site for that. And it's a really great resource for looking at a different kind of medieval map and medieval map of sort of regional map. So digital map is a really great resource. It is currently based largely out of the University of Wisconsin Medicine, but there is uh, some support for it from the Schoenberg Institute at the University of Pennsylvania. And so what digital map it is, is it tries to draw together uh, maps from different institutions, different libraries, and bring them together on one digital platform that you can work with. So you, if you're interested in the Epsdorf map and the Hereford map, you can see them side by side instead of having books and papers and everything piled everywhere. They're both together on your screen. You can annotate directly on the map and they will come with the maps that are published in this platform will have things like transcriptions and translations that will walk you through the different parts of this. So it's a really great, it's a, um, it's a really great resource for bringing together maps that are held around the world and bring them in an easily accessible format to your computer screen. And it's the first time that you've been able to compare a large amount of different maps together in one resource. So this is a growing project and I'm really excited to see where it goes in the future. Um, Pelagios is another great website for working with maps digitally. Um, Pelagios has um, a whole bunch of geographic information uploaded into it. So it has the Barrington's Greek and Roman Atlas is uploaded into it as well as what they call a bunch of gazetteers so that you can work with in geographic information like Roman roads and Roman uh, bridges and all sorts of different medieval town names and all this sort of thing. But in addition to that, they have a um, they have a sub platform. They have their own software that you can access to the website called Recogito. And Recogito is great because it lets you upload an image of your own map that you're interested in. Any kind of JPEG will work. And you can annotate directly on the map. So you can draw squares and be like, hey, this part is really important because I care about it because of X, Y, and Z reason. Or you can do the sort of thing that John Wyatt was just showing where you can um, you can annotate it, you can transcribe directly on the map. So if you've ever worked with medieval manuscripts, it's really hard sometimes because you want to draw directly on the object. This gives you a platform to do it. And there are, of course, other transcription platforms, but maps have a weird format. So you're not going to be working with something that's just in columns or anything like that. And this gives you the freedom to draw squares directly on the objects that you're interested in, transcribe, create your own notes, any of that sort of thing. And then you can share a link to that document with whoever you want with the per appropriate permission set on it. The really cool thing, the last thing I'm gonna bring up about this that's really great, is you can geotag any city that you want. So if you are interested in London, for instance, then you can geotag the medieval representation of London to the current city of London. So then you can switch screens and you can see a modern contemporary map, our current understanding of the world, with the place names dotted on it from the different places you tagged. Now, the really interesting thing about this is that it lets you tag the medieval name for a place. 
So if the medieval name is different than the contemporary name, you can actually look it up by the medieval name. And this includes places from literature. So you can look up, you can tag something to Troy and it will find a place for that, which is really cool because a lot of different platforms today, you need to know, you need to know the modern equivalent ahead of time. And this works with the medieval and classical understanding of places rather than forcing you to think about a contemporary understanding of that medieval place. Well, I could just uh, a touch back, uh, since I, al I already mentioned the Oxford Utremere Map Project, with which I was, uh, to some extent, associated a few years back. It's a good companion piece. If, if you're looking at, at Matthew Paris's England, go, you could go across and look at, at, their, uh, at his version of the Holy Land as well. They're pretty good to set next to one another. Um, so yeah, I, I'd absolutely recommend uh, having a look at that as well. And we're all staring at each other now. So I think that means that we're probably um, out of things to say for this at this particular moment about uh, medieval maps and medieval mapping. But uh, we wanted to take a moment and thank you for taking the time to spending the time with us today and hope that it's been helpful.